Hi, this is Kyle Muncy with Morgan Industrial Technology. In this presentation, we're going to go over the specifics of orbital welding and how it might benefit your company. What is orbital welding? Orbital welding or mechanized welding is when the electrode, in this case tungsten, is mounted to a rotor and travels around the tuber pipe after striking an arc 360 degrees. Back in the 50s, orbital welding actually got its start when the military was looking for ways to lighten their aircraft. They accomplished this by orbital welding small hydraulic lines and fittings, thus eliminating the heavy compression fittings that they were currently using. Now we're going to watch a short video of the orbital welding process from start to finish. The first step is to cut the tube or pipe to length. Here, it is done with an orbital saw, which rotates 360 degrees around the workpiece. This cut is being made with a tube blade, but you'll want to make sure you have the orbital saw blade for your application. The next step in this process is facing your workpiece, also known as squaring your tube end. This will get rid of any burrs or imperfections and helps you to achieve the perfect fit up. Cleaning your workpiece is a very important step in this process, especially in sanitary welding. By using alcohol, you can remove any unwanted contaminants before the welding begins. Before the alignment begins, you must place the appropriate size tungsten in the tungsten holder located on the rotor here. You'll choose your tungsten size based on the weld head and the OD of the tube or pipe you're welding. To align, you'll place the two ends together inside the weld head, ensuring they are lined up with the tungsten electrode, then simply clamp both sides down. To prevent sugaring, oxygen must be removed from the ID of the workpiece. Here we're using purge plugs. Before striking an arc, you must first create a program manually or with auto programming. To use an auto program, You'll simply input the OD, wall thickness, weld head, and material. This will generate a baseline program you can weld with and then adjust as needed. After completing all these steps, you are now ready to strike an arc. The tungsten will rotate 360 degrees around the workpiece and create a uniform weld, much like this one. Any substance such as fluid or gas that runs through tube or pipe during its manufacturing process has the potential of being welded with orbital welding equipment. Many of the industries that you see listed here have critical welding applications where the use of orbital welding equipment is required. Does orbital welding make sense for your application? Before beginning the orbital welding process, Several variables must be considered, such as material choice and the preparation required to achieve an accurate weld. Specifications will differ depending on the industry and the application. You'll want to talk to an orbital welding specialist to determine whether it is the best solution for your application. There are many benefits to using the orbital welding machine, but the main theme is consistent and repeatable welds. Improved speed and accuracy as well as quality are some of the main results that you're going to get with our equipment. You'll also have cleaner welds simply because the welds are done in a closed environment when you're doing the fusion process. As for versatility, you're making your welder's life easier. When it comes to a workpiece that is unable to be rotated or there's poor visibility or the welder's in a tight or hard to reach space. We're also able to do weld data recording with our equipment. This allows you to track the changes in weld requirements for specific applications. As for the orbital welding equipment, there are two primary types. First, you have your fusion equipment where you don't add any filler material, much like the one we saw in the video earlier. Second, you're going to have pipe welding where you do add filler material. In both systems, 
you're going to have a power supply and a water cooler. The water cooler allows you to have 100% duty cycle. The difference between the two systems lies within the weld heads, which we'll get into more detail later. In fusion welding, you will primarily be working with sanitary tube, but some smaller schedule pipe like schedule five or schedule 10 can also be used. The weld is done in an enclosed environment and can be fused in a single pass. There are some size limits when it comes to fusion, as you can see here. As for pipe welding, this process is much like the fusion, but with the addition of filler material. The reason for adding filler material is due to the wall thickness of the pipe you are welding. To get full penetration, you have to take away material in a beveling process. In this case, we suggest a J bevel. Now, since you have took material away, you have to add it back with the filler material, typically in multi-pass. As you can see, these particular weld heads are open and a little bit more robust because of the torch in the wire. One of the benefits of partnering with MIT is our training options. It's always a good idea to get training on orbital equipment to make sure operators are in a position to make successful welds. MIT can come to you or you can travel to our fully equipped weld lab. Also, keep in mind we have a service center with factory trained service technicians. If your equipment ever goes down, you can call us to troubleshoot or you can send it in for evaluation. We also provide preventative maintenance and calibration services that can extend the life of your equipment. Thanks for tuning in for our quick orbital welding overview. If you'd like to share this presentation with your team, you can find the slides in the link below. If you have any questions, leave a comment or you can find us on our website. We'd love to partner with you on any applications or processes you have questions on. We'll see you next time.